So a buyer's agent is an advocate for the buyer to get them the best deal on the right property for them and their needs in the current market. A buyer's agent has fiduciary duty to the buyer to disclose any issues with the property. They should answer any and all questions, no matter how silly they might seem. And they uphold confidentiality when it comes to offers or personal information. So oftentimes I'll have a buyer tell me their highest price that they would pay for a home. But it's really my job, you know, without revealing this number to the listing agent to try to get the deal done for less. And oftentimes I do. Um, you know, when we're considering properties with a buyer, I'm also evaluating properties on how well they would uphold their resale value. And a good buyer's agent really secures a deal, not only when it comes to price, but maybe it's a timeline that's more preferable to the buyer, or it's the ability to finance if they're dealing with, you know, a competitive bidding situation and there's other cash offers, you know, how can you still help your buyer finance if that's what they need to do? And I think at the end of the day, a good buyer's agent also knows when to walk away from a deal. So buyer's agent provides insights on the current market and pricing. Let's talk about price. So there's an asking price, a contract price, and a sale price. Um, you know, the sale price gets published and it's usually delayed. And there's also the aspect of what a buyer is actually willing to pay. So it's really my job to put all of this into context for the buyer and take into account the specifics of their search when really giving them guidance on where we should come in with a bid. I think an experienced buyer's agent knows the market cold. So, you know, they could tell you why a listing went into contract within three weeks versus one across the street that maybe took three months to sell. A buyer will generally have a wish list of what they hope to find in a property, like a minimum size requirement, bedroom count, um, and maybe a general idea of their budget. So if they don't have a sense of their budget yet, I think it is important that they get in touch with the lender as soon as possible. So a good buyer's agent will manage expectations from the get-go. So if a three bedroom is not in budget in the preferred neighborhood, but maybe a two bedroom with the home office is, that's really, you know, for that buyer's agent to encourage the buyer um, to think about. And if there's the possibility that a buyer would be relocated in a few years, a condo would definitely be a better fit because they'd have more flexibility if they ever needed to rent out the unit. And, you know, all in, I think this really narrows down the list for the buyer. So you can get matched right away with a buyer's agent through the Street Easy Experts program. And there's no fees when it comes to working with a buyer's agent. The seller pays all of the broker fees, regardless if you have your own representation or not. So there's really no financial downside to working with a buyer's agent. I would say in the vast majority of New York City transactions, the buyer has their own representation. Another thing too to consider is the cost of not working with a buyer's agent. So some of the most difficult conversations that I've had in the past few months are with buyers who, you know, are now hope, hoping to sell, but they purchased without an agent representing them from their coworker or their landlord, thinking that they got a great deal. And now I'm having a difficult conversation explaining to them that they're going to have to sell at a loss. The listing and buyer agent split the commission that's paid for by the seller. So the listing agent is responsible for marketing the property and really, you know, coordinating showings, open houses, really driving traffic to the listing. Whereas the buyer's agent um, is responsible for bringing well-qualified buyers to the property and putting the buyer's needs first. The first person the buyer should bring in to their team is definitely a lender and a buyer's agent would have lenders that they've worked with that they could recommend. And the lender would provide a buyer with a non-binding pre-approval letter. So that's usually often the document that's required when you're submitting offers. The next member of the team would probably be a real estate, aid, uh, real estate attorney. And those are generally brought in as soon as there's an agreed upon price. The attorney is of the buyer's choosing. So I like to always give out, you know, maybe two or three names for them to choose from. And a good broker, I'd say a good buyer's broker really has recommendations for all team members. Mm -hmm. 